one ambulance. Rigged with cameras for the first time ever. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. Body mounted cameras record everything. Oh, it's going to be another two hour session of wearing the man bra. Hello, you okay? Am I turned up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> Apparently, it's going to be a fish oil lens on it and it'll make your face look even fatter than it is. <laughs> Where's the button, Jamie? It, it's there. We'll reveal what it's really like. So where are you hurting? To be a paramedic. Hello there, Lawrence. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. We get life, we get death. We have a bit of everything. As they deal with 3,000 emergency calls each day. Yes! And it's red one, let's go. Blue light. Taking you right to the heart of the action. You come for that? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the worst bit over. All right. Why are you standing on the corner of the motorway? She's gonna. She's stepping into the motorway. Dead. She's stepping into the road, I swear to God. She has just stepped into the road out of her boyfriend's clutches, if you like. <laughs> that sounded ever so dramatic. Well, they must be having a bit of a tight heart, eh? I said, oh, and she's, tight heart. She's, well, she's just stepped out of his arms into the road. We'll be having another call in a minute. She'll be splatted on the hard shoulder or something, or the plumbing. What is it? Motorway? Run slip thing in my jig? Slip out. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an absolutely delightful pot noodle for lunch. Yeah. I don't even know what I've got. Oh, what is that? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Does that file come out of your bag as well? I'm not going out of yours, actually. So you own that file. I'm <laughs> going out of your bag. Have you got a little manicure and pedicure set? Yeah. <laughs> got a black and decker sander for my feet as well. Oh. Are you going to do it? <laughs> Sorted. Tight, tight. Collage, collage. Oh. <laughs> Nicely done. Mike Arrowsmith and Hannah Simpkins are on the night shift. Mike's three months in to a paramedic training course. So, what can you do? What skills have you done? I uh, can do everything. Yes. Not done much. <laughs> <laughs> can you let you have done? Cool. Uh... The training course is divided between time at university and time learning out on the job. And in this job, you never know what to expect. 28-year-old female, had a fit, banged her head. That's all we've got, that she's on the street somewhere. Let's be down about a minute. Thank you. Is that people down? All right, I can see you. Let's turn them off. Right on the wall. Hello, mate, you're all right. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. been happening? Hello, sweet. Basically, I've just gone in the chippoo to get something to eat. So yeah. I've come back out and she's there. OK. Um, she has a bit to drink. Yeah. But she's banged her head as she's come out. OK. What's her name, Tom? Uh, Lucy. Lucy. Hello, sweetheart. How are you doing? You all right? Can you remember what's happened? I, th I, I think I've had, like, a can't seizure. OK. You suffer from seizures? Yeah, I do. What was the last thing that you remember, Lucy? You remember being in the car? Uh, no, I remember asking Lightning to get me some fish. Yep. I remember going to his side of the car mm -hmm. and if I'm waiting so I remember just falling out the car and smacking the back and of my head. And smacking your head, OK. But then I've had a seizure and I've, I've been banging your head as we go along. Yeah, yeah, which okay. isn't normal. It's a good sign that Lucy can remember what happened and that she's so alert. It means Hannah can almost certainly rule out serious brain injury. But okay. she does need to work out if Lucy injured herself as she fell. Right, Lucy, what we need to do is get you up off the floor, obviously, OK? Come on, have a little sit on our bed, and then we'll check you over in the ambulance where there's some more light, darling, OK? 
It'll be nice and warm. Sound all right. Well. Yeah, get you up off this floor. Have you got any pain in the back of your neck? In my head. Just in your head? And, and my shoulders. In but... your shoulders. What we're going to do, Lucy, is sit you forward first, OK, and see how you feel when you sit forward, and then we'll stand you up. I think I might be sick, though. Say again. I might be sick. That's all right. Don't worry if you're going to be sick. We'll get you a bowl if you think you're going to be sick, OK? Do you feel sick now? Yeah? You've got me a bowl, just in case. Yeah, <coughs> Sorry, sweetheart. No, you don't need to be don't need to be sorry. It's like yeah, your foot yeah, being it's sick. Not, no, it's not, is it? It's all part of our job, don't worry. Like we see fast, yeah, worse things than that. <laughs> right, Lucy, should we get you up off this floor, darling, because you're going to be crazy? Yeah? I'll come under this arm, sweetheart, all right? Ready? One, that's it. Two, three. That's it, just shuffle backwards. That's it. Sit yourself down, there's a bed behind you. That's it. Cheers, darling. They get Lucy inside the ambulance so they can check her over and try to work out why she's had a seizure. Lucy tells them she's had some mental health problems and that she struggles with alcohol. Have you been drinking today? I've been drinking for the last 18 years. OK, are you having treatment anywhere at the moment? I am, but I'm just not engaged at the moment because I just, I just, I, do you know what, maybe I'm too scared to face it. You know, yeah. and that's me being honest, but... It's very honest. Should have pop some sticky dots on you. Anything else other than your mental health problems? Um, I suffer from anxiety. OK. Um, I'm asthmatic. OK. Um, I suffer, of, obviously, it's from seizures. Well, so yeah, you're, you're, you're more than welcome. Um, seizures that I suffer from. Yeah. Um, I've, uh, the doctor said that I'm, obviously, too stone underweight. Which I'm not being funny, I know I'm 28, but I weigh basically I'm size six. Okay. That's not underweight, is it? How old are you if you don't mind me 26. asking? 26. Shut your mouth. Yeah. And I'm 28, and you do this. Do you know what? <laughs> High five, Joe, yeah, well done, love. <laughs> No way. When you actually sit down and you talk to somebody, you realise that there's a lot more to some people that meets the eye. It's a nice thing about the job is that you kind of get to see all different sides of things. Every patient, you know, is an investigation of finding out what's going on, what's happened, exactly. what's caused it. I'm sick constantly. Have you eaten anything today? I don't eat, but... Is that why you... Because was... you asked him to go and get you something from the, the GP. He, you he got that, um... And you wouldn't have eaten it. I don't eat, babe, but honestly, okay. I'm not going to lie, I don't eat food. That's fair enough. OK. It scares me. I know it sounds ridiculous, no, no. but it does. It no, scares no. me, so... Do you think it'd be worth going up to the hospital to talk to someone? No? It's up to you. You've got amazing blue eyes. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no point, is so. Lucy's boyfriend, Leighton, comes to see how she's getting on. She seems to have made a good recovery. All your observations are normal. The only thing we need to left to do, obviously, is have a look at the back of your head and make sure that that's all right. If you've come back round, you know who you are, you know where you are, you can remember what's happened I and stuff you, like that, yeah, so... I said you on phone yeah. and I know where I am yeah. and I knew I'd fall out the yeah. car. It just seemed I blacked out mm -hmm. as soon as I literally opened the door because yeah. I, I felt a bit hot. Mm -hmm. And as I open the door, I just fan out. Right, it's just do your blood pressure again, and then I'll have a look at the back of your head, all right? Keep your arm nice and still for us. Whereabouts it, it hurts? It, it, it's just there. Check it. No, right it, across the back? Yeah. It, oh, sorry, that really sorry. hurts, oh, babe. Sorry. Keep your head pointed that way for me, just so I can have a look into that, see if it keeps going like that. That hurts. It hurts all round there. Oh, I think here. it's where I was smacked it on the here. back. <sighs> Ow. Oh, no, I found it, don't worry. Have you seen it? Yeah. Oh, bad, that really hurts. Lucy hasn't cut her head and all her tests are coming back normal, which means there's no need to go to hospital. If you're sick four or five times, sort of in a row, violently sick, out of a normal pattern for you, OK, take yourself up to A&E or give us a ring back, all right? Or if you get really bad pain in the back of your head that won't go away if you take paracetamol or anything like that, do the same thing, OK? Or if she becomes really drowsy, lethargic, you can't wake her up, anything like that, then ring us back. All right. Fair play to you, babe. Honestly, really fair play. 26. Yeah. And you're doing what you do. There's people younger than me that have done it. You no, know, your attitude and your, the way you are, that's priceless. Yeah, sure. Do you know what I mean? That's really nice of you to say, that is. Well, 
There's not many people that say nice things to us, to be fair. No, we well, like this to... very true. I'm not being funny. That's priceless what you do and the way you make people feel. Okay. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. You can come again. Before they discharge Lucy, they need yep. to do some paperwork. Mm -hmm. Um. She's all right, do she? Isn't she? <laughs> have you got a partner? Oh, I haven't, no. Have you not? No. Yeah, I'll rent, I'll rent him out. <laughs> <laughs> so you can wait, you can have him. Oh, Honestly. No. And then, wait, Min, you can go for a drink then. <laughs> <laughs> Double time. She was lovely. And she was yeah, very yeah. funny as well. She's yeah, got yeah. a good sense of humour. <laughs> It kind of takes you aback sometimes when someone actually does say thank you to you and they're genuinely appreciative. It's that I find yeah, it quite uh, difficult. Oh, I'm a bit like, oh, thanks, thanks, thank you, uh, yeah. thanks very much. And then you kind thanks of wait. Saying thanks, yeah, you. you're kind of waiting for the catch because so often people don't say nice things to us. It gives you a bit of a yeah. bit of a boost because you've met somebody nice. And you know, even if we could only give her advice rather than actually medically treating her, we've done something for her and she's appreciative of it. You should take numbers just in case you can't sit on those. Do you want that? Take that with you. Oh, thank you very much. No, no, no problem. problem. You're, welcome. You're not an inconvenience at all. You're ready to have a chat. No Bye. problem. Take care, Lucy. Safe journey. Bye, Bye. sweet. James Burton and Loz Horobin are on the night shift. It's 20 past three in the morning. Return, return. 4362. A pregnant woman has dialed 999. You just make you aware it's uh, eight months plus uh, water's broken. That's all received, thank you. 999 activated. Didn't say anything if it's the first or second child. Nothing, just maternity unknown patient, so get your hands ready to catch. If we do get a maternity job, Generally, everybody prepares to deliver a baby and takes in like the maternity pack and to knox, um, obviously in the monitor and the bag. So we're always prepared to do that straight away, just in case. Have you delivered many babies? Um, I delivered one about a month ago on the M6 motor. Really? We thought we'll get her into hospital as quick as we can. Yeah. And just as we was pulling off the M6 on the slip road. Yeah. Baby decides to make an appearance and. He's delivered on in the back of the ambulance on the M6. Yeah. It's a nice thing to be part of as well, isn't it? Like bringing yeah. somebody else's child into the world. It's probably one of the most rewarding parts of the job, really. Yeah. Obviously, we get life, we get death. You know, we have a bit of everything. They arrive at the house. It's just eight minutes since the pregnant woman called the ambulance. Take the maternity pack just in case. Any nasty surprises? Their body-worn cameras record everything as it happens. Um, Hello, rang for the ambulance. What's your name, Chick? Fatima. Fatima. What? How many weeks are you? Uh, Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Yes. Have your waters broke? No. No. Only you know what will o'clock starts beep for me for here. Yeah. Only a little bit, you know. After okay. every one for one o'clock start need to be strong. Every twenty minutes, every half hour. When your strong starts being, you know? Every 20 minutes? Yeah. Are these the notes? What language do you speak? Lithuanian. Lithuanian. How often are you having these contractions? Sorry, I don't speak. Say again. How often is she having the contractions? The contractions is pain. Yeah, how often is she having the pain? Do you start uh, the, this night at the 12 o'clock? OK, it's all right. We need to get as much information as quick as we can to obviously keep mum and baby safe. But she must have been quite frustrated as well, as she's in a lot of pain and she's trying to tell me what's wrong, but I can't understand. So I think from both sides, there's that barrier which we try and have to reduce as much as we can. 
The West Midlands Ambulance Service deals with patients speaking around 60 different languages. So it uses a private company of professional interpreters who are on call 24 hours a day. My name's Laura, I'm a paramedic of the ambulance service. You've got a lady that uh, is pregnant and potentially in labour. I just need to ask a few questions for me. If you could ask her if she's got pain in her tummy and how often the pains come in if they're contractions, please. Hello. Fatima's been having contraction-type pains for two and a half hours. But there's no bleeding and her waters haven't broken. Okay, thank you. need some blood from your finger? Um, I think we should be OK for any more questions. OK, bye. How long have you been in England for? Five years. Five years. Do you like it? Yeah. Is that pain coming back on? Yeah. Is the pain starting? Yeah. She's only 32 weeks pregnant, and it looks like she's going into early labour. Thank you. Just relax. Laws calls the local maternity unit. I believe so. Have you been feeling baby move? Now, no. Maybe one hour, yeah. An hour ago? Yeah. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> well, you know what problem is here? Yeah. And inside, I don't know what is happening. <laughs> is the worst pain in your belly or your back? Here, in your here, back. Yeah, and here inside, it's been easy. Right. They said, um, just bring her in. So that's what we shall do. Right, let's get you to the hospital then. <laughs> Are you comfortable at the moment? Are you okay at the minute, yeah? Down. <laughs> Do you want to sit on the bed or do you want to stand on the chair? No, no, that's all right. Do you want to stand on the chair? OK. The hospital is about 15 minutes away, so Loz does her best to keep Fatima calm. Have you chosen a name for her? Um, I think you may be Milana. Oh, that's a nice name. Yeah. Sorry, I know who's speaking English. It's not too bad. I don't speak Lithuanian. <laughs> so if you do need help with an interpreter, just let the nurse know. If you just say that I'm, I don't understand, just to make sure that you feel comfortable about what's going on and what's happening and what she's asking you, OK? Thank you. No problem. How do you say your surname? Alexandra Michute. I bet you can't say that after you've had a few points, can you? Forty-five minutes after calling the ambulance, Fatima is at the hospital, where the maternity staff will try to work out if she's in early labour or if there's another problem. No Cream assistant, Angus Mikota. I've got abdo pain. When did you just have a poo? <laughs> this morning, because it was a nervous one. <laughs> It's Saturday night. <laughs> Hannah Meredith and Amy Stevenson started their shift at one o'clock this afternoon. 
They've still got an hour and a half to go. Let's go Totty's Bottom. Totty's Bottom. Yep. What's Totty's Bottom? Oh, you're kidding hot me. Totty. You mean hot Totty? Yeah. It makes me feel old driving through town when everyone's in their short skirt. And then all I can think is it's cold. Put a coat on. The cold doesn't bother oh, Hannah. She no, grew up on her family's sheep farm in Wales and still spends her days off there. Aim is more likely to be found out shopping, but despite their differences, they're good friends. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh oh. Warnings received. Police required. A call has come through with a warning, which means the police have also been dispatched. Um, all right, all right, I'm going to go for... I'm going to go and shot wind. Stabbing up. No, gunshot wind. In Wensbury? Yeah. We're not in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> Clear. For shooting. We had plenty of stabbings, but no shooting. I've not had either, so. 4362, have you got any more information on this case for us, please, over? Okay, a lot of background noise and swearing. Caller has advised someone who's pushed over. We've asked if it's intentional. Caller has been in by accident. Uh, we're just clearing whether the scene is safe. And here comes the Saturday night. Amy Stevenson and Hannah Meredith are on their way to an emergency call. The ambulance control room have asked for police backup, something they do if they think their crews need extra protection. I don't know if I've ever told you this story, but I went to a job and they said that the police had been there to a domestic and it had all calmed down. The police had left scene and they wanted me to go and assess the lady who got a head injury. And I get there and um, this bloke is seems a little bit agitated and I thought, okay, I'm just going to be a bit careful. And then, next thing I know, this bloke just completely kicks off with me st still assessing his so-called partner. Um, he grabs my equipment, chucks it up against the wall. Ten panics flown across the room with me. And I'm like, whoa, hold on a second. I left all the equipment in the house and just pegged it. I, le I just legged it out. Even the next door neighbours come out to see if I was okay because they could hear them chucking stuff across the room. Have you been threatened before or not? Or... Um, yeah, last week, actually. Oh, did you? The patient said he was going to rip my throat out and watch me die. Nice. But, um, Very nice. Thanks. Just but the Dealing with abuse from patients is becoming more and more common. Last year, 294 paramedics in the West Midlands Ambulance Service were physically assaulted by people they were trying to help. Hannah and Amy arrive at the patient's street, but there's no sign of the police backup. I can't see a police car. Mm, I don't like it. I hate it when they say that police are in attendance and you turn up and they're not. I bet it's up that alley, isn't it? Is the police car on there? The bong from the radio is an automatic warning signal. It sounds throughout a call where police backup is required. Six two. Four three six two. Go ahead, over. We got a message saying police in attendance, so we have approached scene. Um, there's a group of young adults outside a house. Um, do you think we're safe to approach? In this situation, paramedics are trained to assess whether it's safe to continue without the police. There's no sign of trouble at the house, so the team decide to go in, even though they don't know what they're walking into. Okay, thank you. 
Who are we here for? He fell on a bike. A little argument. And he's had major surgery. Shall we get you onto the back of the ambulance so we can assess you properly? Yeah, you can on, bro. Take your time. There's no rush. Whereabouts is the pain? <coughs> At the... OK. When did you have your surgery? Two years ago. Two years, OK. Shall we go through the gate? That's the way we came through. And what was the surgery for? Oh, it's a, it's a Step up here, Neil, or not? Let's get you lying down on here. Neil has been badly hurt at a friend's house party. Right. We've been called because he's fallen over, landed on the pedal of a bike, you know. You don't know whether it's that that's just causing the injury alone or, or whether it's he's aggravated a previous injury or surgery that he's had before. Obviously, there's lots of things in your stomach that can go wrong, lots of things that can, can burst, um, loads of injuries that could occur. So he fell about half an hour ago. Can I have a look, little look, do you mind? Okay. Is this where you stairs? And where's the pain at the moment? Is it here? Yeah. Can you slip your jacket off for me, please? So you had a bit of an argument and I'll you ended up on the floor. Point, so right, OK. So have your finger. What would you score the pain at a 10 at the moment? About a seven. And what type of pain is it? Is it a sharp pain, a heavy pain? <laughs> a stabbing pain. A stabbing pain. They give him gas and air to help okay, with the pain. In your mouth and suck it like a straw. Nice, slow, deep breath in and out. Stomach ulcers can cause sudden, sharp abdominal pain. And if they're about to burst, they can cause people to vomit blood. I have this ulcer, I have Poppy. How many ulcers have you got? I had a clostridium six. Did you? How uh, many did they manage to remove? They, they removed five, but the, the one was too small. OK. Keep going, got you. <laughs> Do you want something else for the pain? <laughs> Lots of breaths. Keep going. That's it. <laughs> Are you able to hold that with your other hand so I can try and get a needle into this arm? <sighs> Keep going with that gas, sweet, if you can. Just until I can get something else in. <laughs> All right, so can I have your arm? Keep going on the gas. Nice, slow, steady, deep breath. Sharp scratch in your arm, sweetheart. All right. You're welcome. I'll give you some paracetamol through your vein, all right? It's quite good with stomach ache. Stomach paracetamol ache. can be as effective as morphine. When given intravenously, it starts to work within minutes. But for now, it's the gas and air giving Neil temporary relief. <laughs> Just a shout. OK. Neil is a foster carer and has children at home to look after. He's now stable enough to head to A&E. His partner, Stephen, comes with him. Get going back on that gas, mate. It needs to go. Let's just go, in. All right, so keep going with the gas. <laughs> You're doing great. Oh, keep going with the gas, because as soon as you stop taking it, it'll start wearing off. <laughs> that paracetamol should be kicking in any second as well. <laughs> I could hear him sort of shout out in pain. So, yeah, just get him to hospital as soon as possible, because if his also was bursting, then hospital treatment as soon as possible is what he needed. I saw this good fun. I tell you that I know who it feels. I've been there before. Is this what it feels like with your ulcer? Yeah. Where's the pain at the moment? Right here. Yeah. 
It's been nearly 40 minutes since they started treating Neil. Sorry to feel my language. It's okay, sir. <coughs> What's the pain out of ten, though? It's a, a good a very four. About a four. Okay. Keep going with that gas. Neil's now stable enough to be taken into the A and E department at Walsall Manor Hospital. If his ulcer is bursting, he'll need emergency surgery. <laughs> I feel like I'm ready for a little nap. No. A nap. Yeah. An LLD. A little lie down. A little lie down. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get into bed. Yesterday, 12 hours flew by, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Really flew by, wasn't tired, but then like you'll day. do other shifts, and that 12 hours is like 24 hours. Mm. Oh, that's dark, I know. Oh, I slept fine last night, but oh, I was definitely getting old. And I wore before I went to bed. Oh, I slept like a baby, sucked me thumb and pooed myself. <laughs> nothing new there, then. No, not really. Oh. <laughs> again tomorrow. Shane Jones is just 21 years old and is a year into his paramedic training. This is totally different from his previous job, working in a hotel, organising weddings. Yeah. With some medium gloves, but it's medium. He and Dan Edwards are responding to a 29-year-old with chest pain and a facial droop, indicating a possible stroke. It sounds serious, so Dan takes the lead. Hello. Is it for you? Jonathan's just 29 years old, but has started getting chest pain, and the right-hand side of his face has gone numb. What's the problem? Have a sit down. We'll do some checks on you. For the past two days, it ain't gotten better. I'm still feeling the same thing every now and then. It's like I get to that sort of attack. Right. Where I strongly feel it. And where's the pain you've got? I'm constantly feeling something from my heart. Yeah. Right. And does that hurt when you breathe in? No, but, like, you notice I'm sitting like this. I can't sit in certain positions. It feels like my heart is giving. I keep getting the attack feeling like something's about to happen. Right. The same time, pretty much. OK. Shane does an immediate ECG to get a picture of his heart rate. Right hand, does it hurt more? Jonathan is really worried. He knows his symptoms could be related to a heart attack or a stroke. So is the pain like around here? Yes, if I press, does that hurt? I was surprised with the symptoms that Jonathan was telling us. With someone his age, um, it's quite unusual for them to present with a facial paralysis and chest pain together. Could you tell that like, the right side's uneven? It doesn't look uneven. Your eye looks swollen, but it doesn't look uneven like stroke-wise. All right, but I'll run through a few things and that'll give me a bit more of an idea. So you said you've had the twitching in your face as well? Yeah. You had any, like, have you, has your eyelid been twitching as well? Or is it, are we talking cheekbone, jaw? The whole right side sort of be like that. Like I'm fighting to keep a straight face. OK. Right then, so if you look forwards that way, just look that way for me. If I press down the side of your head, does it feel more numb, less, more painful? Anything like that as I went down your face then? No. no. So feeling wise, it felt the same both sides. No, I could feel it more on the left. More on the left. Jonathan recently right. moved from Bristol to Wolverhampton to live with his dad. He got a job in a warehouse, okay. but he's trying to make it as a musician. I'm going to make a noise either side of your head. I want you to tell me which ear you can hear it in, OK? He's never had anything like this happen before, 
and it's the last thing he needs if he's to make a success of his music. Oh, brilliant. Tell me when you can see both of my fingers. No. Can you see them both either side at the same time? So I'll start again. Tell me when you can see on the right side. No. Tell me when you can see on the left side. No. Jonathan was an unusual patient. Um, if he just got chest pain or numbness of the face, we could probably determine what was going on. Um, the fact that he got both, and both can be considered potential problems, i.e. strokes or heart attacks, um, we couldn't rule either or. I'm a little bit unsure what's going on. It could just be an infection somewhere or a, ner a nerve problem. Probably best we pop you up to the hospital, though. If we don't know or we haven't got a good idea, it wouldn't really be fair to leave you home with a... After you. you. Just have a seat on there for me, all right? They get inside the ambulance, and Dan keeps a constant check on Jonathan's heart rate and the oxygen in his Do blood. Do I have 10 hours? No, I'm doing all good. It's, uh... So what was worrying you the most? Was it you thought didn't know what it was, or do you think he was having a stroke, or...? I literally thought I was having a stroke, so I thought I might die on the spot, that's how bad it felt. Just put my finger back in there. It's going to shine a light in your eyes. It's a bit dark, isn't it, so... Just look forwards. OK, can you follow the, follow the light again, OK? Ready? and he does a thorough check on Jonathan's eyes. Try and open your eyes a bit wider when you do it for me, that's it. He's checking his neurological function, that the messages to and from his brain are working properly. They take him straight to New Cross Hospital, the same place Jonathan was born 29 years ago. Dan and Shane have spent three quarters of an hour with Jonathan. Well, yeah, no. His symptoms are serious, but they don't know what's causing them. So they'll pass him on to the A&E team, who will try to work out the connection between his chest pain and the numbness in his face. <sighs> OK, nice and steady down there, all right. Follow me. I've got a female, 59, who's currently lying on the floor, pale, abdominal pain, and she feels dizzy when she stands. Poor Linda. James and Loz are working the Friday night shift. They've been friends since they were at primary school. Isn't it weird how we've known each other since we were, like, seven or eight, and then we end up working together? Now we're working together all these years later. Like, 999 what, like mode 20 years activated. Later? I'd never have thought it all those years ago. Me neither. I feel sorry for me. For you? <laughs> they know so far about the patient is that she's got severe abdominal pain and has nearly passed out. Hi, you're right. She's just upstairs. She's lying on the floor in the, the back room, so I'll tell you more about it. My dad's up there as well. Okay, okay. Hello there. And when they see her, it's clear something is very wrong. So I'm Laura, and this is James. Hello, lovely. Is it um Linda? Linda. 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 Sorry. Linda. Can I just have your Linda. wrist check? Lynn. So, what, what's what been happening today? I've been fine all day, and then we were just we were on our way to go for a meal. And OK, just relax your arm for me. And then um, I felt really faint. Mm -hmm. I've been sick. So, what time did you start to feel dizzy? About half past seven, it would be. 
Okay. And what what were you doing when this happened? Were you standing up? No, sitting in the back of the car. Sitting in the car. So you were literally on the way to the meal? I had to come just drained out of it and I was sitting by. She just sort of fell onto my lap. Okay. We pulled the car over and she said I feel really bad. Yeah. Her main presenting complaint was dizziness, which could be blood pressure. So if her blood pressure is low, that will make her dizzy. She has symptoms of that. Or maybe from the cardiovascular system, so the heart, to do with how fast it's beating or if it's irregular, that kind of thing. OK. And it turns out that this isn't the first time Linda has been taken ill like yeah, this. This happened, this happened before, about, was it? about six, six to eight weeks ago, where she yeah. suddenly felt the same, but then she came yeah. and looked into the... She had sickness and diarrhoea, but then yeah. she was fine. OK, was that investigated at the hospital no, with the doctors? No, she was fine well? because it was just like, oh, perhaps I've eaten something. A previous similar episode means it's highly unlikely Linda's just got a bug or food poisoning. And her full medical history gives the paramedics real cause for concern. About five years ago, she was getting pains across her shoulders. Yeah. And she was sent to the New Cross for um, some tests, like uh, on treadmills and stuff. OK. And she had heart failure. Right. Just stopped like that. OK. Um, I resuscitated her, did check to see if she wanted to send us up. So Did she actually stop breathing and things then? Um, or I was in the waiting room. They just came and fetched me. They said that she had basically. They said she just died. You know, the heart had stopped. Heart stopped. So that was it. Right. Okay. Because she's had previous heart problems, you are more concerned. If the heart beats irregularly and fast, the heart doesn't fill properly and eject the blood out. And with a previous heart history, we wanted to make sure there was no current heart problems. So tonight, when you felt dizzy, did you have any pain anywhere? No, not no chest all. pain? No. no tummy pain? You got a tummy pain? I have a tummy pain, like, just on my belly button. Right, OK. No recent coughs, colds, no. injury, illness over the last few Sharp weeks? Sharp scratch. No. You've not been around anyone that's been unwell? No. You've not had any recent surgery? No. Any recent travel? No. You've not been on a plane recently? No. So what I'd like to do is try and sit you up We'll check your blood pressure again, just to make sure that doesn't move. Take your time, though, no rushing. Just lean on me if you need to. OK. Nice and steady. That's Perfect. Okay. How do you feel now? Do you feel dizzy, or...? No, just a bit light-headed. A bit light-headed. Yeah, if you can stay there for a moment so we can... Sick. OK. Come on, have a sit down on your bed, nice and gentle. They move Linda into the bedroom to try and make her more comfortable. Do you feel OK at the moment? Oh, feel OK? You've got a bit more colour in you now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Back, yeah. OK, if you can stand up for me. Useful. We'll do it again. Just keep the arms straight and floppy for me. You feel OK now, yeah? Yeah, sure. Better now, yeah. Lovely. That's lovely, you can have a seat, Linda. Yeah. Your blood pressure stayed the same, everything's lovely. So we're quite happy for you to stay here. Although Linda doesn't need to go to hospital, Loz arranges for a GP to visit her at home. Once he got into A&E, Neil was given morphine for his agonising stomach pains. A CT scan showed his ulcer had not actually burst. He was discharged at 4am. Linda had a third bad episode of dizziness and sickness just a fortnight later. This time, she did go to hospital. Her doctor has advised her to get a pacemaker fitted. And Fatima didn't give birth that night. Her baby daughter arrived on time eight weeks later, safe and well and weighing a healthy seven pounds. As promised, she's called Milana. On to the next. <laughs> <laughs>